Hi, Movie Chronicles here. Today, I am going to explain an American sci-fi movie called Race to Witch Mountain. The movie begins with governments all around the world reporting sightings of UFOs. One such UFO enters the Earth's atmosphere. Instead of going anywhere else in the world, the UFO conveniently crashes into the United States of America. The government goes to the crash site, where they find the spaceship, but the aliens themselves have escaped. Jack Bruno, who kinda looks like The Rock's younger brother, is a cab driver in Las Vegas, and he is extremely tired of being a cab driver in Las Vegas. One day, Jack gives a ride to a scientist named Dr. Alex Friedman, who is an astrophysics scientist. She'll be important later. You guys just wait. Meanwhile, the government has closed off the perimeter of the UFO crash site by claiming that there had been a chlorine spill there. In reality, the government has set up a camp there and is looking for the aliens who escaped their spaceship. They find out that there are two aliens out there. Elsewhere, Jack prepares to start his work day. When he enters his taxi, he finds two teenagers in there. Hmm, sus. The teenagers introduce themselves as Seth and his sister Sarah. They ask Jack to take them away, and in return, they give him tons of money. Seth and Sarah speak in a very formal manner that kinda unsettles Jack, but he agrees to drive them nonetheless. Meanwhile, the government checks surveillance cameras and finds the two aliens. They're actually Seth and Sarah. Surprise, surprise. The leader of his team, Henry, finds out that Seth and Sarah withdrew $15,000 from an ATM without using a card. They check surveillance footage and see the two of them entering Jack's taxi. Henry and his men follow Jack's taxi and start attacking him. So, Seth uses some strange powers and gets out of the vehicle. He then faces the truck head on and crashes it. Then, they continue their journey in the deserted hills. When they reach an abandoned cottage, Seth and Sarah get off, giving all the money from before. Suddenly, Jack hears the sound of glass shattering, so he goes in to investigate. He finds the two siblings hiding. They say that somebody has already been here looking for it, whatever it is. Seth uses a strange device to find a secret location underground. Jack warily follows them. As he does so, a strange man in full black clothing can be seen standing in the shadows. The three of them go underground and inside. They find a huge cavern with beautiful and strange plants. Seth and Sarah find the thing that they were looking for, and Sarah puts her locket on it. Then, she reaches in and pulls out a strange device. Suddenly, they hear a noise. It's the man in black from earlier, a siphon warrior who is a trained alien assassin. Jack tries to fight him, but the siphon is too strong. He starts burning the cavern and all the strange buds inside. Sarah uses some telekinetic powers to fight him off and the three of them escape. Jack drives a safe distance. Then, he stops and demands to know what is happening. But, the siphon follows them on a strange airship and starts to shoot blue lasers at them. They escape through a tunnel as the airship follows. They barely escape as a train comes from the opposite direction and crashes into the siphon's airship. After they stop, Jack demands to know the truth. Seth and Sarah say that they're aliens. Jack does not believe them, but Sarah shows off her telekinetic powers and scares the daylights out of him. She also tells him that the siphon warrior was sent by some people from their planet to kill them. Jack takes the cab to a garage to fix it. After that, he takes the children to a diner for dinner. Jack starts considering ditching them, but Sarah can read his mind. She urges him to continue helping them. Just then, the government leader, Henry, calls Jack and demands to give up the two aliens. Jack pretends to comply with them. Instead, he tells the local policemen that some gangsters are coming in with guns. The local police and the government officials point guns at each other while Jack takes the aliens out through a back door. The door is locked, so Seth changes the molecular density of his body and unlocks it. Then, they escape back to the garage. On the way, they even befriend a dog. Back inside, the local sheriff talks to a person in a high position. 
he realizes that the men before him are powerful people, so he lets them go. Jack then takes his taxi back and escapes. The officials try to follow, but Sarah blows up their cars. Before escaping, they take the dog that they befriended. Seth and Sarah say that they need their spaceship to get back to their planet, but they don't know where the spaceship is. Jack thinks of Dr. Alex Friedman, who might be able to help them. See? Told you she'd be important. Jack takes Seth and Sarah back to Las Vegas. There, Dr. Alex Friedman is having a hard time trying to convince people that there is an alien life out there. There, Seth and Sarah reveal their alien powers to her. They also use their device from earlier to show them holograms of the universe. Alex is extremely happy that her research was right. She eagerly agrees to help them. Seth and Sarah say that their planet is dying so everyone is trying to occupy Earth. But, Sarah's parents found an alternative solution that could help reoxygenate their own planet. The results of that solution are in that strange device which they took out earlier. However, their planet's military wants to invade Earth. So, they sent the Siphon Assassin to kill Seth and Sarah and destroy the experiment. The two of them need to get back to their planet show proof that their own planet can be saved, and therefore stop the invasion of Earth. Alex takes them to another scientist named Harlan, who is an expert on government conspiracies. Harlan checks his sources and finds out that the spaceship has been taken to Witch Mountain. So, the four of them decide to go there. Suddenly, at the pop culture convention, the four of them get separated. Unknown to them, the government officials and the Siphon have also arrived. It tries to attack them, but Sarah quickly knocks him down and they escape. The officials corner them in the casino, so Sarah gives all the machines jackpots. Alex also arrives in the confusion and the four of them escape. The officials corner their taxi on the road, but inside, it's just Harlan. Jack and the rest of them have actually escaped in Harlan's RV. They finally reach Witch Mountain. There, they ditch the RV and make the rest of the way on foot. Unknown to them, some cameras are looking at them. As they reach a ledge, Sarah and Seth are hit with tranquilizers, and they immediately pass out. Jack tries to save them, but he gets beaten up. So, Alex tries to convince Henry that Seth and Sarah need to go back to their planet, but Henry does not listen to her. Later, as two guards escort them away, Jack and Alex pretend to fight and end up making a scene. Suddenly, Jack attacks the guards and hijacks the vehicle. Then, they go back into the mountain through a tunnel. Inside, Henry is running experiments on Seth and Sarah, despite the risk of killing them. All he wants to do is find the source of their powers. Meanwhile, Jack and Alex reach the end of the tunnel and enter the facility. They see the experiments being conducted on Seth and Sarah. Just then, Siphon also enters the facility and starts attacking the soldiers. So, Henry and the soldiers leave the lab to fight him off. Jack and Alex enter the laboratory. They beat up some scientists and wear their hazmat suits. Then, they enter the facility and beat up the rest of them. They wake up Sarah, who unlocks their locks. Then, they escape. Henry and his men return to the lab to find it empty. Jack and the rest finally find the spaceship. Alex goes down wearing a lab coat, pretending to have orders from Henry. She sends the scientists away. Seth and Sarah use their device to open the spaceship. But, just before they can enter, Henry arrives with his men, pointing their guns at them. Seth and Sarah hold Jack and Alex's hands. So... When the soldiers shoot, Sarah deflects all of the bullets. Suddenly, the siphon also arrives and he starts wreaking havoc on the soldiers. In the confusion, the four of them escape into the spaceship and restart it. Outside, the soldiers shoot at the siphon, but none of their bullets work on him. So, Seth and Sarah crash straight into him to escape. Then, they finally escape Witch Mountain. Suddenly, something damages their spaceship. Jack goes to check. It's the Siphon who somehow latched onto the spaceship. In their fight, 
Its mask is removed, revealing a disgusting creature. Seth arrives just then. Siphon attacks him, but it's useless. Seth and Jack work together to drop Siphon into their energy source, killing him. Seth and Sarah drop off Jack and Alex. They give him a device that can help them find him if he needs their help. Alex thanks them for helping them to save Earth. Sarah asks Jack to take care of the dog for them. Then, they leave. In the end credits, we can see that Jack and Alex have written a book about the incident. They did it so that they would get the public's attention. Now that they are famous, the government won't harm them. As they're leaving, the device that Seth and Sarah gave them starts beeping, and they smile at each other. And this is how this amazing movie ends. For more unique and fascinating movies that you may not even have heard about, click on the videos on your screen. Also, do subscribe, like, and comment. Your one act will make a huge difference to us.